Ever since Jurassic Park, people have been talking about bringing animals back from extinction. While it isn't possible to revive animals that died out hundreds of millions of years ago, it may be possible to bring an animal out of extinction if it died out more recently. Here are some of the animals science wants to bring back from extinction. Aurochs Ever wonder why those amazing paintings of cattle on cave walls throughout Europe don't really look like the cows we have today? It's not because cavemen are crappy artists. It's because they aren't actually cows at all, but rather aurochs, a gigantic relative of the cow family that used to roam Europe. Unfortunately, the last aurochs died in the forests of Poland in 1627, but scientists are actively working to bring the beast back to life. And it's not too far-fetched, given that our modern cows descended from aurochs. Scientists are compiling aurochs DNA. And after comparing it to the DNA of domestic cattle, they've begun selectively breeding cows to return dormant genetic traits from generation to generation. It's going to take some time, but scientists believe by 2025, they should be able to reverse engineer the aurochs, with the first generation already alive and kicking. And since they're so much bigger than today's cows, think of all the stakes! Woolly Mammoth the woolly mammoth has long been a candidate for a species humans would like to return to the land of the living. One big reason is that a number of well-preserved mammoth corpses have been uncovered recently from the Siberian tundra, allowing scientists to piece together mammoth DNA and completely sequence its genome. That gives scientists a blueprint to recreate the mammoth. Perhaps more importantly, they have an actual reason to do it beyond mere curiosity. Mammoths used to help protect the ecosystem of their grassland home, but when they died out, the grassland was overtaken by the tundra. That's now contributing to the melting of the permafrost, speeding up climate change. Some scientists believe that by reintroducing mammoths to the tundra, the grasslands can be brought back as well. They are currently working on breeding a new strain of mammoth by using DNA to artificially manipulate a modified elephant embryo. Moa an ostrich velociraptor hybrid that went extinct only about 500 years ago, the moa was native to New Zealand before overhunting and habitat loss led to their extinction. Since they went extinct less so recently, there are numerous samples of moa DNA, which the crowdfunded moa revival project is using to try and bring the moa back to life. First, though, they have to sequence the moa's DNA, a task made trickier by the fact that there are nine distinct types of moa. Hopefully, for our sake, if the moa is brought back, we'll be able to describe them as more as a plant-eating ostrich instead of a people-hungry raptor. Pyrenean Ibex Also known as the Bucado, the Pyrenean Ibex just went extinct at the beginning of the millennium, and it's a great candidate for de-extinction because scientists have already brought it back once. Well, sort of. After the last Bucados died out, scientists harvested their DNA and attempted to clone them using a common goat as a surrogate mother. It worked with the goat giving birth to a live Bucardo on July 30th, 2004. Unfortunately, though, it died a few minutes later from respiratory failure. Still, it was a key moment in the advancement of cloning technology, as well as the first time an extinct species was ever brought back, even if only briefly. A new effort to clone the Bucardo began in 2013, so he is hoping things go even better this time. Quagga Even if you've never heard of the quagga, you do know of its still-living cousin, the zebra. Quaggas looked similar to zebras, but were brown and had had no stripes on the rear half of their bodies, almost as if Mother Nature forgot to finish painting it. Quagga herds used to roam South Africa, but they were hunted to extinction by the late 1880s. Since then, the quagga have been a primary interest to scientists for de-extinction. A group called the Quagga Project has been working to reintroduce the quagga to South Africa via selective breeding. The project is already underway and appears to be working. We're not using any fancy cloning techniques or genetic engineering techniques in the project. It's a very simple project of selective breeding. As of 2016, six of these new quagga exist, so they are still a ways off from their goal of a herd of 50, but it's looking good. Thylacine Also known as a Tasmanian wolf or tiger, the thylacine is another animal that recently succumbed to extinction, with the last captive specimen dying in 1936. Projects are ongoing to try and restore the thylacine from extinction. Researchers at the University of Melbourne recently succeeded in inserting genetic material from a thylacine into a Tasmanian devil, a close relative of the thylacine. This success represented the first time that DNA from an extinct species was used to induce a functional response in another organism. This only the first step in the long path to bring back the thylacine. Though scientists speculate that within 20 years, research will bring the full-fledged return of the Tasmanian wolf. Call your friends to tell them the good news. <laughs>
<laughs> southern Gastric Brooding Frog The Southern Gastric Brooding Frog went extinct sometime in the mid-1980s, and we want to bring it back, if for nothing else than pure amusement. See, this bizarre creature is the only organism known to give birth from its mouth. After a weird process where the frog's stomach would somehow turn into a uterus during the gestation period, it's so strange we just have to see it to believe it. In 2013, researchers funded by the Lazarus Project succeeded in growing embryos containing the revived DNA from the gastric brooding frog. They accomplished this by inserting the dead material from the extinct frog into donor eggs from a living species. The eggs continued to grow into embryos, the first time such a technique was achieved for an extinct species. Continued analysis proved that the cells from the extinct frog were multiplying, which allows for the potential for us to one day gawk at a frog that literally vomits babies from its mouth. Passenger Pigeon At one time, there were an estimated 5 billion passenger pigeons flying the skies of North America. It was one of the most common birds in the world, but due to overhunting, it went extinct a century ago. Fortunately, there are more than 1,500 passenger pigeon DNA samples spread throughout the museums of the world, which is why geneticist Ben Novak has been able to restructure the bird's genes. He and other scientists have identified the closest living relative. They plan to sequence both types of pigeons in order to isolate what makes the passenger pigeon unique. Then use this knowledge to recreate the passenger pigeon. Finally, a new way to mess up your car windshield. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.